Hello again. A new session called Your Sales Profile. This is all about helping you to decide if you're putting your effort and activity into the right direction when you're selling. So right from the very start, that's looking for new clients right through to the long-term relationship. We're going to do this by doing it on, on a form, a diagram, a, a drawing. So you may want to take uh, notes of this uh, as we go along and draw it with me as I tell you this story. The purpose of it is to help you to make sure that you're making the best use of your time in selling. Okay, the sales profile. Here's the, the box with three sections in it and outside of that box is the marketplace. And in that marketplace, it doesn't matter whether you're selling finance or you're selling IT or what you're selling, there's potentially loads of people out there in the marketplace that you can go to. So there they are, there's all the, the people out in the marketplace, these little crosses. There might be hundreds, there might be tens of thousands depending on the business that you're in. Your job then is to identify somebody who is a potential client. Now we're not going to go into that today, into how to do that part of it. We'll do that in another lecture. But what you do is, with your research, you identify somebody that you want to speak to. There's somebody identified. And what you want to do is get face-to-face -face meeting with them. Sometimes you'll do your first contact through the telephone, but in general terms with consultative selling, the ideal situation is to get face to face. So you get the appointment and you go and visit them. And that's the first contact with your potential client. And I call this connecting or your connection. Now, we all know that at a first meeting, there's a couple of end results. One could be, yeah, I'm sort of interested. Okay, we'll continue talking. The other one might be, there's no business here, there's nothing there, so off you go, and that's the end of it. But most of the meetings, if you've done your research ahead of time, hopefully there is some interest. Now, you know as well as I do that it's very rare to go into a meeting and come out with business. It just doesn't happen that way with, with consultative selling. Generally, you have to work on the client, and that's the second box. And what you're going to do is literally do that. You're working on the potential client, and we call this your pipeline. These are people that you hope to get business from. How long does it take you to get business? Well, I can tell you I've had business very quickly, within a week, very rarely, but most of the contacts that I make, I would expect it to be anywhere from a month to six months and sometimes even longer before you finally get the business. So this pipeline is the people that you're working on. So what sort of things can you be doing when you're working on the client? Well, you might be sending them more information, you might be taking an expert to go and see them, you might be waiting until they've got a budget because they may not have a budget at the moment. It might, very often you go to that first meeting and they say to you, oh well, we've spent our budget for this year, can I speak to me again in January? So they would stay in your pipeline, but they're inactive at that moment. So in there, you have to work on them. And that actually is where a lot of people don't do enough activity to keep the contact going and get the potential business. But we'll talk about that again in a little while. Let's imagine this was a new account that you went to see, a new potential client, worked on them for a few weeks, and you finally got the first order. And that's what we've got up there. And this top section that I've got here is called supporting the client. And this is supporting the client in terms of getting the order right, getting it right. That's the first thing. So that first order, the delivery of that first order. For example, in my case, they might say to me, uh, come and do a trial, do a pilot course, and I'll go and do that course. And of course, you've got to get it right. And so that's what we say, getting it right. But having got the first order and having got it right, there's more to it than that, isn't there? What's the ongoing situation going to be? Well, obviously we want to develop the relationship. We want to get more business. We want this to become a long-standing account. Somebody who we can build a long-term relationship with who will always do business with us. That's the hope. So in order to do that, you need to build that relationship. And in this section at the top called supporting the client, there's getting it right, there's supporting the client, there's building the relationship and selling the range. In other words, selling them more products, selling them more services, getting more business, ongoing business from them. So you need to get all these things right. Now, looking at that 
uh, um, diagram, you'll see there the three sections. And roughly there's about a third, a third, a third. Um, and what we need to look at is how much time are you spending connecting with new clients? How much time are you spending in the pipeline building the relationship to get the first order? And how much time do you spend supporting the client? And that's supporting the client in terms of getting it right, but also building the relationship and getting more business. Well, one of the greatest ways, incidentally, of getting more business is to ask for referrals. This, for me, is one of the most critical parts of business. If you go to a very large client, for example, and you get a little bit of business in one department of the client, you can ask for referrals in the same business. For example, we often do business with, a, say, a bank in London. Then we'll ask them, because we have an office in New York, we'll say to them, who should we speak to in New York? And that's a referral. It doesn't guarantee you'll get the business, but it saves you going out into that marketplace and going for a cold call where you can go for a warm call. So if you look at the arrow there, it says ask for a referral and it takes you directly into the connection. It doesn't guarantee business, but it's a warm one as against a cold one and your success rate will be much higher. Now, I want you to have a look at that diagram and I want you to say to yourself, how much of my time am I spending connecting? How much of my time do I spend in the pipeline, trying to work on clients to get that first order? And how much time am I spending in the supporting role at the top there, the buying role, if you like, looking after clients that we already have? What this profile does is it helps you to put your effort and activity in the right direction. What very often happens with relationship managers is at the beginning of their career, they're spending all their time looking for new clients. And of course, you don't have buying clients, you don't have clients to support uh, at that stage. And you build up an enormous pipeline. But one of the dangers is that that pipeline isn't converting into buying clients who you then support. Let me show you another diagram. What's happening in this particular profile? Well, it's exactly as I've described. Here's somebody who is spending perhaps only 10 or 15% uh, of their time in the connecting role. They're only spending 10% or 15% in the supporting role because they don't have a lot of clients yet and they have this enormous pipeline. There's a bit of a danger there. That's not what we're looking for. 60, 70% in the pipeline, not good. Why? Because they're not converting. You're perhaps not closing them quickly enough. Or, alternatively, you've got people in your pipeline who are dead. They're never going to do the business. They should be dumped. I always remember someone telling me when I was in the States and they said to me that that was uh, their, their treasure chest the treasure chest and they always used to say, oh, in fact sometimes he called it this hope chest which I thought was another good name for it, his hope chest and his boss would come to him and say any business this week and he would say no but oh I've got a great hope chest, it's full of potential clients. Yeah, it can be full of them but are you closing them? So you have to have a discipline about your pipeline. You should be sitting down once a week or once every two weeks to look at your pipeline and say what can I do to move this to the next stage or is it ever going to move? And if it's not, put it out, make a note in your diary to call them in six months and forget about it in the meantime. The next diagram I'm going to show you is typical um, of the long established salesperson or relationship manager. And here's another one. What's happening in this profile? Well, you'll see that very little in connecting, very little in pipeline, and this enormous amount of time, 80% of the time spent looking after or supporting the client. What's the danger? The danger is very simple. Nearly all of us have big clients, one or two very big clients, who might be 20% of our business. If for some strange reason, not our fault, we lost that client, how long is it going to take to replace that 20%? This person on this diagram is not prepared for that. And there's a huge danger that that person will run out of clients and then it can take six months to a year to rebuild that whole profile. So what you've got to be careful of, and we'll go back to our original diagram, what you've got to be careful of is how much time are you spending in each one? 
Could I just say there's no one right answer? It depends on your business, it depends on the maturity of your business, it depends on how long you have personally been involved in it. When I was first selling training for a small company in Scotland, for the first three years I was making cold calls, I was getting these appointments, I was spending a lot of time. By the time the fifth year came, I literally was not making one cold call because all my business was coming from existing clients or referrals from existing clients to go and visit other people. That's what you want to get to, but you need to work hard at the initial part of getting the clients in the first place. So what I want you to do is to have a look at your profile, have a look at how much time are you spending connecting, how much time are you spending in the pipeline, and how much time are you spending supporting the client. There's no one right answer, as I said, but what you've got to do is continually look at it and work out whether you're doing the right thing or not. And constantly look at your pipeline to see whether it is alive and well and going to supply your clients of the future. So finally, I mentioned a few minutes ago about the dangers of the pipeline and moving clients or potential clients from the pipeline where you've been working on them into the supporting role, getting that first order. You'll find in one of the other seminars that I'm going to be doing later, there's one called getting commitment from the client and that's very useful for helping you to move clients from that pipeline into that. There will also be a yet another one on building long-term relationships. In other words, under that supporting role, supporting the client at the top there, how do you build that long-term relationship and how do you maintain it? So I look forward to seeing you on those lectures in the future. Thank you.